The first hiatus of 2019 is upon us. Up Weddy Nerdigans, this is the one and only Packer Girl 89 and today's Manga Nerdigan live reaction video is going to be for Detective Conan chapter 1026. So yes, after this chapter, after we get the mystery solved, um, Detective Conan's going on hiatus for four months. Ah, uh, y'all, but why? Why must you do this? But it's for research, so it means it's gonna get better. But I'm hoping we're gonna get a pretty sweet reveal at the end of this chapter. Anyway, let's get to this chapter and see what's gonna happen next. And we got this kick-ass cover of a boy, Kano Kid, with Conan flipping him off in the lands. I love it. Anyway, let's go. Uh, Sarah's approaching Conan, and the truth behind the series of deaths is... Um, and chapter 1026 is titled, uh, Because It's a, a Precious Thing. A series of deaths occurred in the middle of a detec uh, detective uh, drama filming. It seems that Conan has realized something. I don't know why Tokozona Chan's smartphone was found outside the window on the fourth floor, but if he happened to slip and fall from the building when he was going to pick it up, it'd, it'd be an accident, right? And in, in the case of um, the um, AD of Dorisan, um, or the assistant director, who died by poison, uh, since there was no trace of poison, whether uh, or uh, no trace of poison in either the shake or the straw that it, um, he drank um, from it, uh, well, ah, fuck my wordings. Oh. Since there was no trace of poison in either the shake or the straw that he drank from, it can only be deduced that he um, took the poison of his own accord. Although I don't, I, I don't understand. Um, why Adori someone commits suicide? No matter how long you keep us here, uh, you're not going to find anything you, um, new, you know. So it'd be fine if, uh, we, so it'd be fine if we go home already, right? I have a gra uh, grab your, uh, photo shoot after this. Well, but this is bad. If we let them go home, uh, if we let them go now, the evidence will be disposed of. I have to reveal the truth before that. But it seems, uh, that Sarah is more set on investigating me than the case. That, um, that it can't be helped. It's been quite a while, but let's go with that. Hey, do you know who, um, Kyogoku, uh, no Nichan's manager is? Mm hmm It seems that the, that some producer, uh, from a TV, um, channel wants to talk about, uh, Kyogoku no Nichan's, uh, debut as an actor. You mean it? Yeah, they said they'd be waiting on the other side of that, um, TV, uh, channel's car. All right, I'll see what their offer is. Huh? Looks like they haven't arrived yet. Oh, here we go. So, Sunoko? Um, I guess it can't be helped. Looks like Sarah-chan is being absent-minded. I shall, shall I reveal it in her place? The truth behind this, um, uh, serial murder case? It's happening! After so long, we get to see the Deduction Queen Sunoko again. Deduction Queen? Sarah's like, I ain't buying this shit! So Sunoko's on? I see, when Detective, um, Mori isn't around, he uses her. Ah, Sarah ain't buying this shit! Buy this shit. Makoto-san, don't let anyone come near me since um, it'll disrupt uh, my deduction. Yes. Hey, wait. Um, let's start uh, with uh, the first case where the actor Tokozono-san fell down from the fourth floor and died. The culprit flit, um, flitched a... Uh, uh, sorry. <sighs> Wordings. The culprit filched uh, Tokozono-san's smartphone, placed it outside the phone window on the fourth floor, and with some trick they made Tokozono-san, who was searching for his phone, get surprised and fall down. They uh, must have set up the phone with some special ringtone and given it a call when Tokozono-san reached out to pick it up. No, if the culprit did that, their phone number would have, would be recorded in the call log. But that's the only trick that could have made Tokozono-san fall down. Why do you think there was no there were no um there were no scratch marks on Tokozono-san's phone? It's because the culprit had a reason to go outside the window and carefully put it, the phone down. Though rather than put it down, maybe it'd be easier to understand if I said hide something below it. I see. The prank item that looks like a butterfly. The culprit twisted the rubber band and um, held it down and put the phone on top of it to hide it. Then Tokozono-san, who took the phone, got surprised by the prank item and fell down from the building. It seems Tokozono-san hated insects, so he'd be uh, so he'd have been, um, been even more surprised. But why did Adi Adori-san even have that prank item with him? Coincidentally, the prank item that um, made uh, Tokozono-san plummet to his death uh, flew through the window on the fourth floor into the room. And um, after the incident, Odori-san pick, picked it up when uh, we went to, into the classroom along with the inspector and the others. Isn't that right, Deduction Queen Kun? Kun? Uh, yeah, um, Odori-san picked it up. He used to threaten them, the culprit and got killed because of it. Is that true? 
But if that's the trick, anyone among the staffers could have pulled it off, right? So how did Adorisan manage to pinpoint the cul uh, culprit? He laughed when we were watching the video of uh, Takazana-san plummeting to his death. There was probably something in that video who indicated um, the culprit was. Shall we have a look? Hmm. It seems um, like P.A. Hokisan was already looking up at the fourth floor before Tokozona-san even fell. That's um, because we were talking about how to uh, Tokozona-san had probably already gone up to the fourth floor. I don't mean before, but afterwards. Although a person who just uh, had just plummeted uh, down, there was uh, someone who was acting str rather strange, you know? It should be fine, no? It really packs a punch. What? What? Oi! Oi! It's too early! Uh, yeah! Yes! That person didn't fall took us on Asan's descent to the ground. Instead, they kept looking at the fourth floor. The makeup artist, um, Aburai Hidaka-san, you are the culprit. I know! Oh, my God! Uh, you were the, uh, you were looking in the direction of the prank, um, item that you set up beneath the foam. Since you'd have to retrieve it while the others were distracted by the body of the victim. Um, but unfortunately, the prank item flew into the room, then got picked up by Yodori san who ended up using it to threaten you. I kept silent and listened to you, but only you're, but you're only blabbering nonsense. If uh, Hidaka-chan is the culprit, how did she poison um, Yodori san um, when there were no traces of uh, poison in either the shake straw nor the straw that he drank from? Um, Abare san used uh, that straw in her crime. Uh, if she uh, cut out the part uh, before the joint and sliced it vertically, she could have put it on uh, top of another straw like a cat. Right, Abare san prepared the vertically um, uh, sliced straw and enlaced it with uh, poison beforehand. Then she said uh, that she could take uh, the, uh, the allergy medicine without water in order to make uh, the PA go buy some drinks. Um, of course, she had checked beforehand that uh, the fast food chain where Adori san usually bought, bought that uh, the peach melon shake from was located near this filming location. Then she pretended to help distribute the drinks to everyone while discreetly taking two straws. She put the poison laced um, end of uh, the straw onto uh, one of the uh, one of them, and then it was only a matter of, of uh, getting it added to Adori san's shake, which was um, lacking a straw. Afterwards, she um, would have only had to. Um, uh, secretly retrieved the end of the straw lace with poison while everyone else was uh, distracted by the collapsed Adori san who Im um, bibed uh, the, po the poison. Fucking right. Um, then the mysterious murder case where no trace of poison was detected from the shake nor straw is complete. So the reason she took um, Adori san's phone at the same time was uh, because there was a threat mail on it? As I keep saying, show us some actual evidence! Amari san, you've been sneezing for a while now. Um, did, do you really take your paw on allergy meds? Shoo! What? Of course you took them, right? It's dangerous to walk around holding a poison lace straw with your bare hands. If it were me, I'd roll up the straw and put a capsule. Um, after using it for the crime, um, I'd put, the, um, put it back inside the capsule. You did the same thing, didn't you? You mixed it in with the other capsule so it wouldn't um, be suspicious even if you were searched uh, search later, but then you couldn't take your meds, right? Once the, capsules, um, the capsule is found, it'd be conclusive evidence. But you were lucky. The one who identified you as the culprit was Adori-san, whom, um, who whom you were also going to kill from the start. That's wrong. I prepared the poison straw um, as a backup in case the plan to kill Tokozuna-san with that prank item didn't work. Didn't work. But since Adori-san took the same shake as uh, he usually drank, maybe it's true that I was lucky. Then you were really the one who killed the, both of them? But Why? Could it be because of Nishibe, who died in an accident? Yes, that's right. I knew that was going to be the fucking motivation! It was going to be because of Nishibe. It was either going to be because of Nishibe, or it was going to be because of Scorn Lover kind of shit. Um, the Scorn Lover on the, um, uh, oh my god. Uh, let me, uh, a Scorn, um, like, ex-lover of, uh, Tokozono. That, it was going to be one of those two. I was right. Um, that soap, the soap that uh, squirts blood that uh, Tokozono-san uh, set up to prank him, because of that, he remembered um, how he caused uh, Janemi-san to be badly injured. That night, he couldn't even catch a wink of sleep. The next day, he said that he'd drive uh, the car to the filming location. I said to him, why don't you ask someone else to sub in for you? But he replied, if I don't go by myself, I'll cause trouble for someone else again. I was of two, uh, um, two minds on whether or not to kill him for the longest time. Unlike you, production assistants, we actors can't be replaced so easily. But I decided to do it upon hearing his words today. I had to make him apologize to Nishibe-kun in the, in the netherworld. Ah, oh, wait! Hey, open the door! Amari san open the door! Um, 
She's going to crash the car into the abandoned school building and kill herself. Oh my god, we got a suicide! We got a suicide kamikaze shit! This is Aerochon! Okay. Whoa! Okay, what? This man is not human! He is a Saiyan! He is a Saiyan! Kikikiyoko-san? Wait for me, Nishibikun! I will join you now! Oh! God! Huh? What? Ron said hurry! Dude! Cute! This, dude, this man is not human! Dude, Ran is not human either, I swear. You fool, I wanted to j uh, die and join the Shibikun. Why didn't you let me? Because I can't let you pile up even more sins. What sins? I only wanted to kill myself. Life isn't something that's owned by anyone because it's a precious thing that some that should never be snatched away. Ayoma! Oh my god, Ayoma! I see what you did here with the title of this chapter, and oh my god, this line is brilliant. I'm gonna read this again because... Ayoma, this is beautiful. I love it. I love it so much. I'm going to read this again. Because this is so fucking true. Ayoma is wisdom right now. Ayoma wisdom right now. Life isn't something that's owned by anyone. Because it's a precious thing that should never be snatched away. I love this fucking line. Oh, I love this line so much. And I love the title of this I love how it's tied in with the title of this chapter. Well, I just borrowed these words from my, my, my friend's mother. It's my baby's mother. Um, she's good, very photogenic. She reminds me of Fujimi Yukiko in her younger days. Uh, maybe I'll scout her. He should, he should be first though, right? He even stopped a car that was rushing into the abandoned school building single-handedly. Yeah, it's the birth of a new star. A few days later, uh, I, uh, I arrest, I arrest you, uh, for the, um, obfuscation of justice. Cut! This is terrible! You're stuttering too much! I'm sorry! Um, I guess he's not actor, uh, material. But kinda sounds so cute! Um... What?! It said four months! Use anime news network! You guys are fucking liars! Um, Ron, uh, uses the word she once heard from Heiji's mother. You motherfuckers lied! Um, uh, the series will be on break until, uh, February 13th. So it's in four months on Anime News Network? You guys are fucking stupid. Don't... Oh, God. I, I'm... Uh, you make guards make me look dumb. But at least we're on break. It's not as long as I thought it was going to be. Oh, my God. But this chapter was really, really good. It... I knew it was going to be either, I, I told you guys, it was either going to be a, uh, to avenge the former PA, or Nishibe, or it was going to be a lover, uh, a lover scorn. Um, but it was kind of both in the way, if you think about that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts um, in the comment section below, what you guys saw of this chapter. What do you guys think of Ayama's writing? Like, I love it. I can't wait to see what Ayama has in store. And fucking A, Makoto is just not human. Jesus Christ. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdic and Zinc if you love what I'm doing and want to contribute to keeping the channel alive so I can, um, bring you more Detective Conan greatness. There's a few ways you could do that. You could donate to my PayPal, Patreon, go fund me, purchase something off the Amazon wishlist, all that's in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, find me on PlayStation Network, that's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later. Bye!